the Upanishadic texts say that thou art, you are that. Or it says, I am Brahman. You know, in Sanskrit, Tattvamasi, Aham Brahmasmi. These are the Mahavakyas, the great statements you find in the Upanishads. So if you ask, who is the you, who is the I here? Very simply said, very simply put, the you means the student. The teacher is telling the student, you are Brahman. When you say, I am Brahman, this jiva realizes itself. This individual sentient being realizes itself as Brahman, the absolute consciousness. What Vedanta says, it's like this. Our experience, if we look very clearly at our experience, I am a sentient being and I'm looking at all of this, this world. And if I'm particularly religious, I believe that there is a power which creates all these things that I experience. So three things. You, the experiencer, this experienced world, and an unseen reality which is behind this experienced world. In Sanskrit, drashta, drishya, and drishya nirmata. Drashta means the seer, drishya means the seen. Seen means experienced. And something which generates all of these things. Why is the third one necessary? Because an explanation of all that we experience seems to be necessary. Our mind asks for it. Why are all of these things appearing? Why in this particular way? Why in this sequence? There is a why you're asking. An answer to that why is that generator of all these experiences, these objects, these, these, these worlds and all these people are in more simple language, the jiva individual being, the world and God. Atma, Jagat, Paramatma. Or in very simple sans uh, Hindi, Vovan Swami put it this way. Main, Yah, Vah. I, this, that. That means thou actually. Thou means thou my lord. So I, me, this person. And whatever I experience throughout my life, that's the this. And that mysterious thing behind everything which is the cause of all of this. What Vedanta says is, all of these three are appearing in one undivided awareness. I, this and thou, all three, individual, world and God, all three, Jiva, Jagatishwara, all three, these differences are appearing in one undifferentiated awareness. That one undifferentiated awareness is Brahman, the Absolute. So when the teacher tells you, you are Brahman, he is telling you, the individual, that your reality is Brahman. But the reality of the world is also Brahman. And the reality of God is also Brahman. This is the meaning of I and you in those statements when he's asking. The consequence of this is remarkable. The consequence of this is everything that you experience, you yourself are none other than the, than the ultimate reality, Brahman. And everything that you experience is your beloved Lord, is, is God. Vivekananda said, never approach anything except as God. God here in the ultimate sense, ultimate reality. And God is also that ultimate reality. We are all one in that absolute consciousness. That is the meaning of I and that. And the question is asking what is that and who experiences what. The individual being does not experience that absolute because the it's not an object of experience. What is an object of experience? The world. In one word, the world is called this. You can always refer to the world as this. This person, this chair, this world, this moon, this sun, this galaxy, this quark or this super string or whatever. This, an object. And something unseen beyond the object, thou, my lord. 
and I the experiencer. Vedanta says all three are actually one reality. So, practically, what does it mean? When we deal with anything in this world, you're dealing with God. You're dealing with your most your, your beloved, the Lord. Be careful in your, they say, in Vavahara, in dealing, in your transaction. Vivekananda said, never approach anything except as God. The person you are meeting, the stranger, is the Lord. Your most intimate beloved God is that stranger. <laughs> 